those of you who are now joining us as attendees, um, you are in, we are in a um, web webinar format. So our board and panel is uh, uh, able to speak. If um, when your case comes up, we will move you into um, a panelist position where you'll be able to make your presentation and um, discuss the proposal with the board. Um, when the public hearing section starts, we will identify people who um, are able to talk, or if anybody would like to be able to talk, I'm sorry, please uh, use the raise your hand function, which is at the bottom of your screen. Um, and that will uh, give us a little indication that, that you're ready to, um, to talk. And um, you'll be able to address the board at that time. So and, Madam Chair. Um... Oh, I'm sorry, but I forget it. I'm trying to get Ed Williams in. He needs the link. Have him join regularly and we can move him up. Copy link. So Madam Chair, oh, a couple of things. I need to make Pam a co-host. And we haven't seen Brock and Cable yet, but uh, we'll see if they show up. Uh, so I am going to um, turn this over to uh, Tony, our chair, and mm -hmm. um, you've got the statement to read and then go into the agenda. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Tony Gonzalez calling to, together the meeting for December 7th, planning board. First, I have to read a statement. This meeting is re being recorded, and recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 38, section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the re record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you wanna ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. Okay, so uh, introduce the uh, Mr. Rob May, director of the planning department, Pam, Gurley, what is your title? You do everything pretty much. Rob's assistant, <laughs> mini, mini Rob. We have Larry Hassan. Present. Sam Abros. Present. James Sweeney. Here. And our newest board member, Parita Das. Unmute yourself. Present, sorry about that. Oh, and present. And we also have the honor of Chief Williams joining us. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, how are you today? Good, how are you? Good. Okay. We have several um, agenda items that are have been continued. So I'm gonna read those off first. So if you're here for any of these items, uh, they are being continued to the date mentioned. So we had a presentation for the master plan adoption of Lovett Brook study area. It's being continued to January 5th, 2022. Permission to return to ZBA for 6870 Field Street, continued to January 4th, 2022. Site plan approval for 135 Elliott Street, continued until January 4th, 2022. Site plan approval for 15 Rutland Square, Continued to January 4, 2022. Site approval for 1208 West Chestnut Street. Continued to January 4th as well. Definitive subdivision, 50 Farrington Street. Also continued to January 4th. Definitive subdivision, plot two Belgravia Ave. Continued to February 1st, 2022. Did I miss any, Pam? No, nope, that is all of them. Okay. Um, so quickly, we'll review the agenda for tonight. We'll review the acceptance of the meeting from September. We have 
A and R's, 11 Center Street. We have 119 to 011 Main Street, two lots. We have 20 Meadowbrook Road. We have lot releases, lot eight and nine Lynn Marie Way, 96 Ashfield Drive, extension request for 1200 Montello and plot 59 West Chestnut Street. <coughs> then the agenda. Okay. Site plan approved. Oh, that was extended. Okay. Preliminary plan for Amelia Estates. Number one. Moving to number three. Definitive subdivision property 50 Farrington Street. Oh, that's continued. Sorry. Definitive subdivision. Property 8894 Kingman Street. We will hear permission to return to ZBA 134 Armisen Street. We'll hear permission to return to ZBA 33 to 55 Westgate Drive. Permission to return to ZBA. We'll hear 370, 380 North Montello Street. We have another permission to return to ZBA, 14 Battle Street. A site plan approval, 119-28 and 119-29 Industrial Boulevard, Industrial Building. Site plan approval for parcel ID 161-0430 Clemens Ave, extensions of utilities pavement. And that last one got continued. Pam, did I miss anything? All these nope. changes. Nope. Okay. Not everything. All right. And um, just to preference this meeting in regards to one of these items on the agenda, because it's a bit confusing, there's another property that's adjacent to 134 Armiston Street. Woodland Park is adjacent to 134 Armiston Street. We are not here to hear about Woodland Park. No questions will be taken for the Woodland Park project. This is just return to ZBA for 134 Amiston Street. So if anyone is here to discuss or hear about Woodland Park, that's not gonna be, um, that's not on the agenda. We won't be discussing that. Now back to the top of the agenda. Did everyone have a chance to review the minutes for the meeting September 22nd, 21? Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? Motion to approve minutes from September 22nd, 21. Second. Okay. Roll call. Larry Assange? Yes. yes. James? Yes. Samantha? Yes. And uh, we'll excuse Poeta because she wasn't there, correct? And I'm a yes. Thank you. Next, we have ANR applications, 611 Center Street, two lots. Um, Are we going to handle these? I don't know if anybody's here for that. Um, if they are, could they raise their hand? But 611 Center is a um, commercial property. And commercial properties don't have um, any setback requirements, frontage, minimum lot size. So there is an existing non-conforming residential use on that property. And, but because it's commercially zoned, they can divide the property. So the new lot would only be buildable under the commercial guidelines. And it's our recommendation to um, endorse that plan. Okay. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve in our application 611 Center Street, two lots. Second. Okay, roll call. Vote, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? 
Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. Marita Das? Yes. Connie Gonzalez, yes. Um, the second one is. Oops. Main Street. That is a parcel on Main Street. The other parcel is over the town line. Uh, um, encroachment on the West Bridgewater from West Bridgewater onto the Brockton property. So they're just removing that piece of the Brockton property and transferring it to the West Bridgewater owner to cure the encroachment. Is anyone here representing that? Um, no, I spoke with attorney Lawton and he, no. Okay. <clears throat> Just opening the chat, no one's there. Okay. Um, so again, the recommendation was to endorse. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second that. Thank you. Roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha, Samantha, it's a, a broy. Ambrose. 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 Okay, thank you. Samantha yeah. Ambrose? Yes. Marita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Okay, 20 Meadowbrook Road. These are two existing commercial buildings of, well, on, on, on an industrial piece of property. They're splitting the land to sell one of the properties off. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to lot releases, Pam. Um, lots 8 and 9, Lynn Marie Way. This is the subdivision off of North Cary Street. Um, he has completed most of the work. We have all the required documentation. We have um, a check that will more than cover the remaining lot, the remaining work to be done in the street. And if you remember, this isn't, you don't take surety for houses to be built or anything like that. You're only taking surety for the remainder of the work to be done on the road. So we have the, um, we have his estimates on file that we're on the Google Drive and we have his check. So okay. we can release those final two lots to him. Check please so sounds correct. 20% contingency on top of that. that so. You're saying you have that? I have yes. that. Okay, all right. It sounds thorough. Is there a motion? Motion to release lots. I second. <laughs> Roll call vote, Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Ambrose? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. 96 Ashfield Drive, Pam. 96 Ashfield Drive was a lot split. So there's the existing lot and the newly created lot. This is a really old subdivision. <coughs> um, recorded with the registered deeds, but they just never built on that second lot. The, they're selling it and the um, builder has completed the work in the street, which is all we're concerned with. The utilities have been brought off the, off the street and onto the private property. So I have the letters from the DPW saying that it was inspected. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Okay. Um, before I forget all these ANR plans and the lot releases, plus the plans for Amelia Estates and Cypress Woods will need to be signed 
So if you guys could stop in the office the next few days and it's probably going to take you about 10, 15 minutes. Is Friday okay? Because I think I will be busy on tomorrow. That's, and no, that's fine. Friday, Friday will be fine. Mm -hmm. You in on Thursday, 2 p.m.? I can stop in mid-afternoon around 2. Yep. Okay. No, that's fine. Whenever you can stop in. Um, the extension request, I think, is next. Yeah. What do you have for this one, Pam? Um, this is what everybody will know as Lynch's towing. And... Um, Two years ago, there was a project approved for housing on that site, but contingent upon David Lynch finding a new home for his towing service. He has had two sites that he's been interested with, neither panned out. And he's just looking for an extension to continue that. So we'd like a two year extension on the project. I'll make that motion, Madam Chair. I'm sorry? I'll make that motion, Madam Chair. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, first of all, Pam, I feel like I remember this, was it right before the pandemic or after we, we approved something for, I can't remember what it was. Did we approve this for him in the past and this is what needs to be extended? Correct. Okay. All right. All right, so um, Samantha made the mo first motion. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. We're granting a two year continuance incorporating the original approval dated 12, 2019. Yeah, right before the pandemic. Okay, no street acceptances. No. Okay, so moving along to the first <coughs> item on the agenda to preliminary plan, Amelia Estates. I have um, moved Mr. Burke over. Um, who else is here to represent yeah. the applicant? Evan Watson, uh, um, yeah. Mr. May. I see Evan. I just did, Evan. Uh, Mr. Macy is unable to be here tonight. Uh, he has a family matter. Yes, we spoke to him earlier. Right. Um, so that's your whole team then? It is. You and, you and Evan. Okay. All right, we did it. <laughs> Take it away. With your permission, Madam Chairman, my name is uh, Jim Burke. I'm an attorney at law with offices at 48 North Pearl Street in Brockton. And I have the pleasure to represent uh, Charlie Macy, uh, who in fact is the developer of Amelia Estates. Uh, a number of the members of this board will recall that when we first uh, appeared before the planning board, we did so with a plan that showed 125 feet of frontage uh, so that we would have a subdivision that we uh, believe was consistent with the, the neighboring subdivisions that were approved both at Cypress and Westbury. That being 125 feet of frontage, but with a full 30,000 square feet of land area. Uh, during that uh, initial stages of our development, it became clear uh, that there was going to be a potential problem with an abutter in relation to an appeal concerning the determination of whether or not it's appropriate for a planning board to approve a plan with reduced frontage. Rather than delay the subdivision for a, an extended period of time, uh, Mr. Macy chose to proceed to have the subdivision approved with 15 lots, uh, which is a, a subdivision uh, that met both the total area and frontage under our current ordinance. Uh, under the current procedure that's been established, we need to go back before the planning board to request permission to be allowed to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to pursue the plan that we originally attempted to proceed with and intend to uh, uh, put before the city of Brockton. Uh, 
that being 20 lots, I believe, Evan, you can correct me, with uh, 125 feet of frontage and 30,000 square feet. So what we have done is we have provided you with a, uh, for want of a better vehicle, uh, a preliminary plan showing a subdivision uh, with uh, uh, 20 lots uh, and a uh, 125 feet of frontage. Uh, that plan, Evan, will go over with you briefly, but I understand it to be uh, substantially identical to the original plan before the planning board, with the exception of the movement of certain utilities uh, for lots because of the extension of the number of lots. So uh, we believe that this is a, a, a good request that we uh, intend to present to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, under, as I said, our current procedure, we need the permission of the Planning Board to be allowed to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And what we'll be seeking is a, a subdivision with a number of lots consistent with the area and consistent with the original application that we presented before the board. Evan, do you want to highlight anything else about the plan? Uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to put the plan up on the screen if I could, and I could show you um, what how it how it all lays out and the small change that we had to make. So, if that's okay with you guys, yeah, my plan. Can everybody see my um, the plan on the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so as attorney Burke was mentioning, this was the original, well, the plan that was ultimately approved by the planning board at the last hearing it shows 15 lots and the full prescribed frontage. Um, we have the water line that extends to the abutting property and we have a, a drain line that comes off here to the detention basin. So they're the only two spots where we have uh, utilities that come off of the, uh, the road. And this is what we submitted as our Form B application preliminary plan. And you can see we have 20 lots. And if I kind of flip through here, you can see that this drain line moved slightly over. So it's at the, um, at the property line that, that moved over a little bit. Um, you can see that we added the frontage. So all of these lots have a minimum of 125 feet. Uh, which is the same as the required lot width for all lots. On the cul-de-sac over here, uh, we do show 107.7 feet at the setback line, which is similar to uh, other projects that have been approved. And then uh, here, lot 17 and 18 is also 108. So you can see that with 125 feet of frontage, we're still able to meet 30,000 square feet throughout um, versus the other plan, which the lots end up being um, pretty oversized. So I'll, I'll leave that up there. If uh, Burke, you want to speak to this plan or if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer anything. No, if, if the planning board has any specific questions, we'd have to try to answer them. Actually, um, I do have a question just really uh, quickly. Uh, in your presentation, you state that we had previously approved uh, a 15 lot subdivision. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. All right. Um, you were also granted a waiver from us allowing cul-de-sacs to exceed 750 feet for the Amelia Estates. Is that right? That is also correct. Okay. Is there a reason or what? I, I guess I'm a little bit confused about why why you're changing the plans or what, what the purpose is. Why well, first, first off, there isn't any change on the uh, length of the roadway. So that waiver that you mentioned is not affected in any way. Uh, the footprint of the roadway is not changed in any way. Uh, what we're seeking to do is reduce the size of the lots, which was our original intention when we first brought it before the board. Uh, and then had to change because of the circumstances I described with an abutter to have a, a conventional subdivision approved that met the, uh, uh, the frontage uh, and also the uh, lot uh, area. So we're actually not changing anything on the plan really, except what we're doing is we're modifying the individual lots to conform to 125 feet. And I do apologize because it's absolutely correct. Uh, the the, the cul-de-sac lots at setback are different 
uh, as it's treated frequently in the city because of the, uh, the, the, the size of the cul-de-sacs. So what we're just seeking to do is, is to be allowed to go back to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, to uh, get permission to have reduced frontage of 125 feet. If we're approved, then what we're gonna have to come and do, I believe, Evan probably can speak better than this, but I think we probably have to file for a modification of the approved subdivision uh, that uh, you are going to sign uh, Thursday or Friday, which was just uh, uh, identified this evening. So that's how we are going to proceed. And procedurally, that's how we have to proceed under the current format in Brockton. I guess my question really uh, is, so you were approved for a 15 lot subdivision before, and now you're back asking for approval of a 20 lot subdivision. Well, we're not asking for approval of a 20 lot subdivision from this board. We're asking for permission to be allowed to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to, to seek approval of a 20 lot subdivision. Okay. I guess I'm just wondering, and I'm so sorry, I don't mean to monopolize the time here, but you know, you know where we had a plan you know, in place before that we had approved, and it looks like, I guess I just don't understand why we're looking for a 20 lot subdivision at this point. Oh, well, again, you know, we're not looking to have you approve a 20 lot subdivision. We're but looking to have you, you looking approve. For it? Well, it's real simple because what? what we intended to do in the beginning was have a 20 foot lot subdivision. I'm not sure you were on the board at the time, uh, but there were discussions at that time about whether or not the planning board as of right had the ability to approve 125 foot lots and make a determination of frontage size. It was determined from a legal perspective that it was inefficient to do that with the planning board or seek that approval with the planning board because it could wind up with a lengthy appellate process that would delay the ultimate subdivision. So what we chose to do is proceed under a subdivision utilizing existing uh, uh, ordinance uh, and uh, planning board rules and regulations, get the approval, <laughs> with the full knowledge that we were subsequently going to seek to have a subdivision that met the exact requirements of Cyprus, which was approved next door, and Westbury, which was approved uh, directly to the north. So what we're looking to do is have a compatible subdivision with the existing subdivisions in the area at 125 feet of frontage. Mr. Burke, I'm sorry, Mr. Burke, I have a question for you. What is, what is the I, I'm sorry, rate? madam. I, I'm sorry, Jim, can I, I just want to state a clarification. What, um, what the applicant is asking is that the planning board approve a preliminary subdivision, um, a, a preliminary 20 lot subdivision. That does not necessarily mean that um, you have to approve it in the definitive subdivision process. You can make other um, alterations to it. But the, the reason why they are applying for a preliminary subdivision is so that the Zoning Board of Appeals knows that someone has looked at this, has checked out the engineering, has checked out the road pitch, the drainage, the sewer, um, and, and um, then the, the ZBA can make a decision as to whether or not to grant a variance for a smaller lot. Remember, those lots don't exist until you approve the definitive subdivision, which is the second part of this process. I'm sorry, Jim, you can go ahead now. That's all right. Uh, thank you, Rob. Uh, I guess just for the benefit of the board, uh, Mr. Burke, if I could ask you, what is the buy right frontage per lot in R1A? Uh, 175 feet of frontage, I believe. So basically from 175 to 125? 125, which has quite frankly, Mr. Sweeney, become the, the, the standard, the gold standard uh, the gold for a lot of, it, literally uh, in the city. Okay. That, Thank that, you. That, yep. uh, Ms. Mr. Burke, so I was a little surprised to see this back on the agenda. I, you you kind of openly admitted you presented it one way to get through one part and knowing that you were going to do this. I wasn't aware of that. I didn't think I was gonna see this again. We reluctantly approved the first plan because we had recommendations from 
the fire department and the police department, our concerns for public safety, extending this road. But we did pass it because of the, like I said, police department and fire department. So now you wanna add another five houses. I understand it's a pre preliminary plan, I get that. There were 15 conforming lots. Now you wanna to go to 20 non-conforming and they do not conform with the 1A zoning regulations. There's not enough frontage. So I'm just a little surprised to see this back on the agenda. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure, Madam Chairman, you should be because we identified from the very beginning of the process what we intended to do here in relation to the 125 feet and met with the planning board extensively, excuse me, yeah. met with the planning department extensively on this and identified the plans at 125 feet so that we would have a project that was consistent with the neighboring subdivisions. Mm -hmm. uh, we even uh, filed with the knowledge of the planning department uh, with the 125 feet and sought a waiver of the frontage as may be authorized by state statute. Uh, so it was with the full knowledge, madam, that we were coming before you for the 20 lots, not the 15. We only reversed our position when it became apparent that it was essential to have the subdivision approved with virtually no opportunity to appeal and then proceed with the 20 lots that we had originally intended in our discussions with the planning department. So I'm not sure why there's any surprise, Madam Chairman. That's always been our plan from day one. And it's been well known by the planning department. Uh, the planning department would, would not um, disguise anything from us. But I remember it being a 20 and then it went down to a 15 and that's what we, we, we approved. Correct. Reluctantly, reluctantly I'll emphasize. Um, and so, at that time, no, it was not known to this board that the plan was for a second presentation for 20 lots, non-conforming lots, when we finally came to an agreement on 15 conforming. I, I can't all speak I to that. To, that's all I have to add. Um, any other board members? Madam Chair, it's Larry. Um, could maybe, I don't know, maybe Rob, could you just, and maybe for the public that's here too, are the two abutting other proposed subdivisions, Westbury and Cypress, um, are those similar lots as what's being proposed here or no? Just looking for some clarification. Um, I believe they are very similar. Okay. All right, that's the only question I had right now. Thank you. Other board members, if not. So I have, I have a question, ma <clears throat> Madam Chair. So since it was approved for 15 lot, now they're applying for 20 lots. So they're adding some amount of impervious surfaces. Sorry, per yeah, impervious surfaces. So did you, so my question is, is that the plan uh, accounted for those surf impervious surfaces because there will be some water runoff and some uh, some extra uh, storm water runoff and uh, that's that's a great sewer. question. I could answer that. Sure. Um, when I designed the detention basin and the uh, stormwater piping, I did it anticipating that we would have twenty lots. So if you look at the drainage calculations, um, the amount of impervious area for a 20 lot subdivision was accounted for. Um, you know, it works great for 15 lots um, and it will work perfectly great for 20 lots. So yes, it, it was designed um, to, to, to work for the 20 lots. There are no other questions from the planning board. Um, any from Chief Williams? No, the only comment I would have, and it would probably be directed towards Evan, is right now the access road where the water line goes through to um, the end of Cyprus, um, it seems like it's straddling two lots. Is that correct? Any, any way to clean that up and just 
so we can deal with one person, not two. Um, so what what happened was this was the approved plan here, and it went to lot. It was on this lot entirely, and now over here it's on it's just on the other side of the property line. So th this access road is still just on one lot. Okay, the the plan I'm looking at it looked like it it uh, actually straddled two lots, so I wasn't 100 percent sure. Okay, thank you. The easement the easement may but. That could be adjusted. Uh, the road goes right along the uh, the lot line. Okay, it, it would just be helpful to have an easement on one piece of property. I'm sure you'll realize that if we have yep. to deal no, with. No, that's people fine. That's clear. Yeah, if we move forward, all those details would you know come together on the modification plan. We'd have that all annotated correctly, so you'd see that. All right, just keep that in the notes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Is this open to public comment? No. Um, Ma Madam Chair, um, we are able to take testimony from the public. Uh, I, I do want to, to remind the board that because this is a preliminary subdivision plan, there is no abutter notification. So the general public may or may not be here to comment on this because they don't know that this is here. Uh, the first time that they will see it is when um, the zoning board meets. Uh, at, at some future point in time. So I do want to let people know that if you are here to testify about this, please use the raise your hand function and we will um, uh, unlock your microphone and, and uh, give you an opportunity to address the board. And I am not seeing anyone using the raise their hand function or the chat function. So um, I think it's because obviously there hasn't been a better notification, which is okay. acceptable. If there are no other questions, is there a motion? Motion to deny. Second. A okay, roll call vote, Larry Hassan? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, yes. to approve Motion or Motion to deny. deny. Motion to deny. James Sweeney? Yes. Yes to deny? Yes to deny. Denial. Samantha Broyce? Move to deny. Rita Das? Yes to deny. Tony Gonzalez moved to deny. Moving along, continued. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Scott Farrier had a um, family thing earlier today. Tonight, so he asked that we just move his things closer to the 14 Battle Street items. So that would so the Kingman Street right now mm -hmm. to move it down. That's his. Hold on to it. Yep. Yep. Hold on, for Scott. Until he wants okay. to move right around 14 Battles. Because he feels he'll be here by then. And if okay. you can just put him at the end of the entire agenda. Uh, Mr. May, are you trying to add something? So Ar Armiston is next then, if we're moving yes. um, yeah. Kingman down. Um, yes. Pam, let's move the panelists over. Um, who is representing Armiston? If you would raise your hand so we can identify you. This is permission to return to ZBA 134 Armiston Street. I've got the design firm uh, promoting them. I have Ms. Lasso, but I will hold off until we have a, um, we're in public uh, comment. Um, who else is um, on your team?
Rep Dubois wants to speak also. Well, let's get the the panelists applicant. first. I understand that those people want to the applicant. I'm sorry. So can we get Mr. Kane? Are you there? Who's with Hardy and Mann? Uh, Sean Hardy, engineer for the applicant. I, I do know they are on the call. Um, is that um, Bob? Is oh, that there's Bob Kane and Steve Miller. I see. Steve Miller, yeah, that would be them. <clears throat> While you're trying to move the panelists, I just want to remind for anyone who might have uh, who heard the opening or have joined late. This Armiston Street application is um, has nothing to do, but do with Woodland Park. Woodland Park is adjacent to this property, but it's a separate application. It has nothing to do with what we're hearing tonight. I believe all of the uh, applicants' team are on here. Um, who is the lead? Is that uh, Jake Creden? Hi, this is Rob Kane from Armstrong Street. Sorry, jumped on a little late there. Thanks for getting me in, Pam. Uh, Sean Hardy is going to be the lead. He's from Hardy Man. Uh, you should see him. I believe he's unmuted and on video. So I'll kind of let him run with this. Thank you. All right, Sean, you're up. Thank you. Um, so this, as said, it's it's seeking permission to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Based on a change, um, if I can I think, share my screen again. So if back a number of months ago, um, this has gone through a few iterations. So this is 134 Armiston Street. It's a pretty large lot. It's three and a quarter acres down the end of Armiston Street. Um, there are wetlands down to the rear. There's certainly um, a big change in elevation elevation about 190 down to about one almost 50 so a 40 foot grade change across the lot there is an electrical easement and a sewer easement so one of the early iterations was requesting a, a proposed subdivision go in here um we i guess technically it got approved through planning with the requirement that it would have a 50 foot wide right of way Unfortunately, we only have 48 feet of frontage out at Armiston Street, so that was not um, doable. So the applicant went and proposed this layout here, which is was three kind of single unit detached residences on the lot um, in a sort of a condo or a homeowners association type layout with a 24 foot driveway, the three separate lots as shown here. Um, that was denied through the zoning board. So now what we're proposing, and hopefully if the screen change went through, I did it change for you guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. So now what is proposed, and, and we heard some of the comments through ZBA during the denial, but so there are proposed a three unit townhouse, so a triplex type unit with um, each unit having a garage, parking over here, um, we heard concern over the width of the access drive. So we're proposing a 30 foot wide driveway versus the 24 that was previously proposed. Um, we have a no parking area down here that would facilitate being able to turn around fire apparatus or emergency vehicles. Um, we heard the concern about where plowed snow could go. So the intent is that we could push the snow down and it could go in this area. Um, down here and it's sort of the common area, common use area. We also heard some concern from some of the abutters um, regarding drainage. So we, we show at least schematically, we do note that it has to be formally designed if and when approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals, but we wanna, we wanted to put it on the plan and formally say that, you know, we're proposing to collect um, runoff from this driveway, pipe it down and discharge it down here so that it won't run off and impact the abutters um, hearing again that, that that was a concern during the previous public hearings. So um, 
this is what we're presenting and we're proposing, I guess, at this time. And we're asking, again, permission to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals based on that we feel this is a significant change over the three standalone units with the smaller driveway and, and lacking some of those features that the Zoning Board had indicated that they would want to see. Okay. Very good. Are we ready to open up to board member questions? Uh, yes, if you are ready. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know about the rest of the panel, but I, that's a, I really can't see the plan there if we're mapping this out. Is anyone seeing that is very faint on their display? It's a little light, but I can, I can see it. Can you make Sean, that can out? Can you increase the size? That's a little better. Could you zoom in? That, yeah, that's, that's much better. Thank you. Oh, sorry. So, Madam Chair, I have a question. Sure. So, um, that no parking area, is it the paved area? Yes, that, that no parking area is intended to be paved. It's to be used, um, again, through some of the earlier iterations of this, we, we heard loud and clear that emergency vehicle access and the ability to turn around emergency vehicles was a concern. So that would be an area. So, you know, fire engines could come down in here and turn and make that, it, it's size to meet that T head kind of turnaround that would allow that to happen. So that is proposed to be paved, um, not for parking, but for turnaround of emergency vehicles. Yeah, so my question is, how the visitor will know it's not a park parking area parking zone you know um, um because it's we would have signage yeah we, we we would certainly be open to have signage there or even some sort of striping um yeah to prohibit that um mm -hmm. I, so i mean there's there's a each unit's proposed to have a garage as well as outside two additional parking spaces so there's a two-car garage for each unit Plus an additional two spaces, so we have the availability of four parking spaces per unit over here in this area that we have designated as parking. So um, certainly, on on an off chance, there might be more than that, but we we think that we've we've given ample parking, and 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 I think combined with some signage there saying no parking, um, I, I think that would be it would prohibit that. Madam Chair. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, because we have not been meeting in, in person, um, we have not had an opportunity to, to meet with um, the new members of the zoning board. And, and I apologize, or uh, excuse me, the planning board. And so I apologize for that. But one of the things that um, uh, we're trying to accomplish here is um, uh, the Massachusetts general law says that if a property has been to the zoning board and been denied by the zoning board, that um, they, the applicant can not come back to the zoning board for a period of two years with the same plan in an attempt to, to get back and, and get approval with the exception of applying to the planning board for permission to return to the zoning board within that two year window, provided that they have made a substantial change to their project. And so what we are, or what you are doing today is determining, has the applicant made a substantial change? So we're not talking about means and methods. We're not talking about, um, uh, uh, parking and how many bedrooms and all those other little things that are that that come up in natural discussion. Um, we are just looking at um, how has this project changed. And if you remember, it was originally set up as a um, a six lot subdivision. It then became a um, a three separate building condo unit project that was denied. And now we have one building, but it's, it's sort of three townhomes that are right next to each other. So I'm hoping that the board will see that this is a, 
a, a significant change from what was previously rejected by the zoning board. Right, thank you. I know you that sounds that. like mansplaining, I'm sorry. No, thank you for that. So it's pretty clear we're just here to determine if there's been a significant change for this applicant to return to the zoning board. We're not here are charged with making any other decisions about the plan, just if there is enough significant change to return. Other questions? I myself don't have any. Uh, we're gonna open this up for public comment and I do see we have Representative Michelle Dubois. And I, I was gonna say that my explanation doesn't mean that the board can't ask these questions. It's just that no. It's, it's the basis but, of your decision. So right, I, I believe it, Representative I Dubois has been moved over. Good, thank you. Thanks. Representative? Ah, I was on mute and everything. Is there any, uh, good, good evening, uh, Madam Chair. I'm happy to be here with you and thank you so much for your efforts. Is there any way I could make my comments after um, Liz Lasso? Probably. Sure thing. Do you see Liz? Um, not, Jamal see. has his hand up um, and as does Liz. Oh, I'd like to go uh, after the residents if I could. Okay, Liz, are you still here, Ms. Lasso? Oh, there you are. I'm going to unlock your microphone and uh, allow you to speak. There you go. So you should be able to unmute yourself now. Ms. Lasso, are you able to unmute? I just unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Hi, sorry, my, my computer is a little slow. Um, hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk um, with you again. Um, first of all, let me just say, uh, you know, uh, between me and the other residents around here, uh, we're all very much looking forward to something being done with this property uh, down the end of Armiston Street. Um, our major concern is that it's just done right and it's done in a way that keeps everyone safe here. Um, one of the concerns that was raised, and I sent you all that email with the attachment um, from the original meeting where it was decided that there should be a structural integrity test performed on Armiston Street to ensure the safety of all the residents so that a gas line is not compromised or a water pipe is broken, and that was agreed upon. But yet we've never seen anything like that being done. We've seen no structural integrity test uh, performed that was not included in the meeting minutes. And so um, that's a major concern of us here uh, on Armiston Street. So is there any way that if you are going to send this back to zoning that you can have that kind of condition in there that, you know, so long as that is being met and raised that that, that can happen uh, to add that language to uh, any kind of document so that it's a documented, um, uh, you know, response to our concerns. So let me just ask so I'm clear, are you, so if, are we allowed to, uh, I guess this is for Rob, are we allowed to consider her request where we're just approving this to return to zoning? Is this the appropriate time? It would be the zoning board who would make that um, uh, as a condition. We are just a yes or no, up or down um, vote. Should they be allowed to return to the zoning board? Mm -hmm. And uh, I do want to note, um, I, I have had conversations with Ms. Lasso this afternoon or today, that um, the planning board did approve a subdivision, preliminary subdivision plan um, that had conditions with it. Um, when the applicant was rejected at the Zoning Board of Appeals, the applicant did not then come back to the planning board and file for a definitive subdivision. So since that definitive subdivision was never filed for and appears not to be filed for in the future, those conditions and that approval seem to be moot. I mean, it, it just goes away. 
so you're saying that they so there's that would have to be added in at the next zoning board of appeals meeting is what you're saying at at, at the zoning board of appeals yes Okay, and then also I have my neighbor uh, Adriana here with me. She's at the end of Armiston Street, and she's the, the direct neighbor of uh, 134. Um, and this woman has had uh, a nightmare of a problem with the drainage. And I, I understand that they're proposing to have a drainage that is going to the back of the property uh, as well too. Um, however, with the, the rains that we have been having and the immense flooding that has been happening on the street that we've been reporting to the city, but it seems to have fallen on deaf ears, um, we're looking to see about having uh, rain catch basins uh, at, at the end of the street as well as a, some sort of drainage system there. Would that also be something that would happen at zoning? Um, if you're talking about um, you know street flooding, that is something that the um, uh, Brockton DPW is, is going to have to address. It's not necessarily a, a zoning well, issue. Well, the thing is, we, we've tried to approach them and we've had no luck whatsoever. They've done nothing about it. And as you know, Rob, the uh, Broadway yes. build was supposed to uh, repave Armiston, Allerton, Pratt, and Loring Street upon the completion of the Woodlands project. And that's one of the reasons why I brought that up earlier today in my email to you, is that we were supposed to have all four of these streets repaved at that developer's cost with rainwater catch basins. But yet that's not happened. And that developer is long gone. And now we're on developer number three, finishing up that heritage court property area. And the city lost the opportunity to have those streets repaved and with rainwater catch basins. Someone else is up here with fans. Oh. oh, oh, not to mention the fences, but that's that's a topic for another time because we're not supposed to mention that in this meeting. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the public, Rob? I am going to. Um... Excuse me, I am going to unlock Jamal. Jamal, you should be able to unmute your Hello. microphone and address the board. Great. Hi everyone, my name is Jamal Brathwaite. I live at 18 Parkview Lane. And at the end of Parkview Lane um, is Armistan Street. Uh, this property, 134 Armistan Street, is less than 100 feet from Parkview Lane, and the um, so my statement is one. I want to get express a positive statement of support for the the applicant to gain permission to return to ZBA, and the only concern I want to raise is that um well actually the developer he's addressed it. Uh, my it was regarding the stormwater management system. I just want to confirm that there was a plan in place, and I do acknowledge the um <clears throat> he's spoken to the existence of this drainage system um all that i ask is that can in the planning board approval document can a clause condition exist that requires the existence of that storm water management plan as described today so it's my understanding the plan that is presented if we approve this to return to the zoning board this plan would be what's presented to the zoning board. Is that correct, Mr. May? Yes, yes, ma'am. This plan, no alterations from it. And, you know, I'd just like to say to um, Ms. Lasso and, and Mr. Breath White, it's also, we also share the same concerns um, mm -hmm. and interests. We want to make sure that any project is done the right way safely and certainly it's not a detriment to other areas especially the neighbors okay but again we're just here to review this for permission to return to zoning and it will be this plan here if it's passed same plan we presented there all of your concerns are legitimate and you should definitely attend the zoning board should this be approved okay so I just thank you so much for those, those statements and response. I just want to highlight we did attend the last CBA meeting and what they did state was that anything that was agreed at planning stays in planning. Uh, um, Jim, you, you were present for that meeting. Um, and so, so I just want We're not approving anything here except to return. Right. Return that there's been a substantial change. Yeah. 
if yeah. there is, if there has been or has not been a substantial change, we're not approving any plans. So that's yeah, what I've been, been trying to make clear. And I think Mr. May has also tried yeah. to make clear so that the board members right. understand and the community, the public understands we're not approving anything except can this applicant return to the zoning board of appeals because there's been a substantial change. We're not approving any no. plans. Right. Well, we'll, well the, at, on the date that that plan is approved, I uh, assume that there will be a planning board approval document that exists. And I'm just asking if when the date that's produced, a clause can exist that speaks to the stormwater management plan that was described today. Yeah. So um, Pam is taking notes and I'm sure if this gets to that stage she will remind us but i also encourage you and the abutters and community to attend that meeting should there be one thank that you we'll be, be that there would be, that would be the appropriate right. time to ask us and remind us and again share your interest that would be the appropriate meeting are there any other people who would like to speak on this before um like representative to dubois oh gotcha Anybody else? Uh, Representative Dubois, I believe you have the floor. Thank you, Rob, and thank you, Chair. Um, I'm here uh, this evening to speak in opposition to sending this back to the ZBA. There are three um, units. That's the same number of units as um, in the last proposal. Uh, the impervious surface looks about the same to me. And so I really do not see a substantial change in this applicant's proposal. And so I would suggest, and um, I'm here to just you know, say I would prefer for you not send it back. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Rob. Board members, any um, questions, comments? Can we highlight the changes again, please? That be the. Is the that engineer? would be appropriate? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so the previous plan was, I guess I can go back to it. So it was a 24 foot wide roadway with three separate standalone units. Um, we did not show drainage. Um, again, they were kind of three separate lots, uh, and, and just hearing from the boards and the recommendations that the, the driveway was too narrow. It didn't look like it afforded the opportunity for emergency vehicles to turn around. Um, and with the spread out nature of, of the residences. So then this proposed plan, we have a 30 foot wide driveway, which seemed to be what the request of um, for emergency access through the fire department was. We have the ability to turn around the vehicles here in this area. Um, we make note that snow removal has to be pushed and, and it's gonna be in this area. So further not impeding any access in there. We have the three units as townhouse units, as opposed to standalone separate units, uh, you know, detached. This is a triplex type unit. Each unit has a, a, a two car garage plus an additional two parking spaces. Um, so as not to have any, you know, overflow parking or everything's off the street, it's, it's all going to be in this lot. Um, again, we are showing a conceptual at this point drainage with an outlet going to the back. We do note down here, and I know the app, um, one of the abutters was concerned. So on our plan, we're specifically calling out outfall discharge to be designed upon ZBA approval of three units. So we're acknowledging that, you know, we might have some conditions, something might have to move one way or the other or something through some of those discussions, but we are committed to showing, capturing this runoff, piping it and, and disposing of it properly per stormwater management in the back. So um, I guess that's a long way of saying it, it, three a triplex units instead of three separate units, a driveway that's six feet wider to allow for that emergency access, acknowledging a, a place for snow removal, um, the ability for emergency vehicles to turn around, 
um, acknowledging that we are going to be putting, and, and, and again, this is a, a schematic at this point, but this we're committed to drainage, to capturing the runoff from the impervious surfaces and discharging it to the back of the lot. Um, so we, we feel that this certainly is a, um, a substantial change from what the previous plan that was denied was, and we're hoping to go back and, and certainly it'll be a public hearing and have those discussions with the zoning board, but um, we feel that this is a substantial change and, and, and are seeking permission to go back and, and, and try that at zoning board. Thank you. Okay, um, if there are no other questions, would someone like to make a motion? Motion to grant permission to return Zoning Board of Appeals for zoning relief. Second. Roll call vote, Larry Hassan? Yes. Jim Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Ambrose? Yes. Marita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next on the agenda, we have permission to return to ZBA 33 to 55 Westgate Drive. Carm, Eric, who today? else is on your team? I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay, go sorry. ahead. Uh, should have attorney Patrick Sullivan in the audience and I Maha believe I have. I believe I just promoted Patrick and I'm looking for Mr. Patel. Mr. Patel, could you raise your hand so I can see you in the audience? Oh, I think I just moved him. Oh, there he is. I found him. And there we go. Thank you. I believe you're all there. Excellent. Okay, you're up. All right. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, for the record, Eric Dias, registered professional engineer with Strong Point Engineering Solutions, uh, here tonight with attorney Patrick Sullivan and Mahavir Patel of Carm Properties, um, on behalf of Carm Properties. Um, this project, if I can, I'm gonna share my screen. It's probably the easiest way to go about this. Oh, is it giving me that option? Let's try this. It's not allowing me to share my screen for some reason. Seem to be having some technical difficulty. Um, Mr. May. You should be able to share. Yeah, it's um, getting, I think the issue might actually be on my end because it's giving me the option. It just tells me when I try to share it that my screen sharing is paused for some reason. Um, just FYI, I heard on the news this evening that um, Amazon Web Service is having major problems and they host a lot of websites and that may be causing problems here. Okay. If you don't mind, let me try to open it from my end. Sure. Um, I'll pull open the documents. If not, well, I'll just have to use a little imagination, I think. Uh, start talking. <laughs> sure. I'll use imagination. <laughs> okay. Um, so just by way of reference, this is a Zero Westgate Drive, which is actually right next to the Shields MRI building. Um, mm -hmm. This property, if you look at their building, they have kind of a split parking lot. This property holds the auxiliary portion of their property, of their parking lot, and then the rest of it is completely vacant. Uh, it's a mode field, basically. It backs up directly to the DW Fields Park. So the project required us to go to the ZBA for two things. One was a special hmm. permit um, for the use of an 82-unit hotel. The other thing that was required was a variance for a setback. Your zoning bylaw has a provision in it that requires a 100-foot setback to the DW Field Parkway. Um, and we simply, given the size and the shape of this lot, we simply cannot accommodate that. So we went to the ZBA requesting a zero foot setback. 
Um, the talks at the ZBA were actually very positive. The ZBA basically went on record as saying that they liked the project, they're in favor of the project. What they did not like was that we had a letter of opposition from the Parks Commission imploring them to deny the variance that we asked for. So the ZBA didn't want to vote against the Parks Commission. They essentially voted to deny the variance and in their deliberations made it very clear that they were denying it and encouraging us to enter back into discussions with the Parks Commission to come to an agreement. And should we come to that agreement, they encouraged us to come to this board to request permission to go back to the ZBA and represent on the basis that that agreement with the Parks Commission in their mind would constitute a substantial change. So that's exactly what we did. We left the ZBA meeting on June 8th. We went about negotiating with the Parks Commission. We did increase setbacks to the park by 10 feet. We've agreed to a number of provisions for screening. We've also agreed to um, allocate some work on behalf of the Parks Commission. Um, and they have sent a letter of report of, of support or will be sending a letter of support to the planning office and to the ZBA saying that we've reached an agreement. They're happy for us to move forward. Um, as part of those negotiations, we've knocked our number of units in the hotel down from 82 to 79, which is a product of us having to lose a few parking spaces to give them, wow. there we go. <laughs> we had to lose a few parking spaces to give them more of a setback. Uh, Rob, if you can go to the second page. So there you go, the hatched area that you see around the perimeter of the parking, that is a 10 foot setback that we were able to give them. Um, there is a retaining wall um, just off of the building. Rob, if you can go right there, we've agreed to a, a mesh net on top of that retaining wall um, to provide some additional screening. Um, and we've agreed to allocate um, resources to do work in this area at the Parks Commission's discretion. Um, so they have, as I said, they, they either have or will be sending a letter of support. Uh, the ZBA seemed to think that us finding a common ground with the Parks Commission would constitute a substantial change. So we're here tonight respectfully to ask you folks to agree and send us back to the ZBA so we can try this again. Um, Mr. Diaz, what is on the other side of that um, fence with the screen that you you? So the main driveway of the DW Field Park is about 100 feet from the, toward where Mr. May's cursor is. It's about 100 feet from the property line. In between that driveway and the property line is just wooded area. There's no disturbance there now. And that wooded area will remain. Um, so in addition to that wooded area, we are having a 10-foot setback, which we will be screening to provide even more of a vegetative screen between the parkway proper and the, the property. Okay, thank you. Board yes, members, questions? No, uh, as a member of the ZBA also, that was, uh, you know, really came down to the stipulation with the buffer and we, we really wanted them to work that out with the, uh, the parks department. So it would take it off the ZBA's plate. So that's, that's good to see they've come with that. Oh, good. Thank you for that input. Other questions from board members? Is if not, is this open to the public? Um, yes, it is. Yes. I need to switch over so I can see who's there. I'm going to stop sharing. I don't see uh, anybody with their hand up. Anybody from the public like to provide testimony <laughs> on this return to ZBA? Please use the raise your hand function. And I do not see anybody indicating that they would like to testify. All right, thank you. Board members, is there a motion? Motion to approve, return to ZBA. Second. Okay, roll call vote, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Excellent. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. Thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for your help, Rob. Pam, Thank you all. Pam, flag me if we are, if Scott is ready. If not, I'm 
going to keep going in line. Um, Sam Scott is not ready. That's Jake Creedon here. He's going. I don't see him yet. Myself. Okay. Yeah. All, all right. Next up, we have return to ZBA three seventy three eighty North Montello Street. Is the applicant here, Ra William Podson? Um, it would be Attorney Clancy. Is he here? Oops, I'm sorry. Paul? Attorney Clancy, if you raise your there hand. He there he is. is. I got him. Paul, is there anybody else on your team? Good evening, board members. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Good evening, members of the board. Paul Clancy for Mr. Hodson, and this is a request to return um, to the ZBA. Originally, we went before the ZBA, and, and that was the hearing on Tuesday, April 13th, 2021. And at that time, we proposed to construct three two-family dwellings um, on two lots. And, the, and, and what we did was we, we configured it into three lots, and we had a proposed two-family on each one of the three lots. It was a it was a commercial it is a it's a it's a c2 zone however if you take a look at the plans that we had submitted the original plan that was submitted was for three two families it is in a commercial zone however as you can see from the from the from, from the plans there are mostly residential dwellings in there. There are single family homes, two families, three families, and four families. We did not have any opposition. In fact, I spoke with some, we didn't have anybody come and speak in favor, but from speaking with some of the residents in the neighborhood, they would prefer to see residential construction there as opposed to commercial. It's a very busy intersection at East Ashland and North Montello Street. When we presented this to the board, um, Chief Gallagher suggested that three, three two families may be a bit congested, congested in that area where we have a traffic light there at the corner of East Ashland and North Montello Street. They were also concerned about the fact that we had six curb cuts. We had two curb cuts for each dwelling. Uh, and, and as I had stated, Chief Galligan, uh, Chief Williams, Mr. Bernard all suggested that we come back with a, a new plan with two houses, two, two, two families. Although they did not indicate that on the, uh, on the, on the um, denial. Uh, the, in fact, the denial was very, very vague, but at the hearing, they all suggested that we come back um, with, with two as opposed to three, two families. And, and, that, and that's just what we did. And as you can see, there's only going to be one curb cut as opposed to six curb cuts. And we won't have the cars backing out onto East Ashland Street and onto North Montello Street in that busy area. We will keep it um, as a, you know, a, a residential a property consistent with what is already there um, in the neighborhood. Uh, and, and I think that that will appease the neighbors. Um, as I suggested, they, they really don't want commercial in that area with those other um, residential dwellings. I mean, and, and I think that the plan that, that we came up with this time satisfies the, the prior boards, the zoning boards concerns. And we addressed those concerns. We addressed the curb cuts and we addressed the uh, reducing it from three two family homes 
to two two-family homes. So with that, I, I would suggest that there is a substantial change of, of plan of, from the old plan to the new plan. Madam Chair, if I may, um, you can see that the plan is up in front of you, um, but I, I should go back and address that the Zoning Board of Appeals primary reason for denying this application was that there was no hardship. And the, in order for the Zoning Board of Appeals to grant a variance, they must find that there is something about the uh, topography, um, shape of the lot, or um, soil conditions like ledge that prevents this property from being developed for its zoned purpose, which is commercial. If you've been in this area, everything to the south and west of this property is all commercial use. Um, the city has been trying to retain what commercial land we have so that we can um, improve our tax base without raising burden on residential properties. Not that two, two families is going to bankrupt the city, but um, the first issue that we have here is there was no hardship. And I don't know how the applicant can cure the fact that they have no hardship. Um, the other issues that we've talked about, that the applicants talked about the curb cuts, the two flat, two family, versus three, um, those are kind of um, icing on the cake issues. Um, and I don't know how much the board wants to take those into consideration um, as, as a uh, addressing a significant change. The, the real significant change is, is addressing the hardship. So I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Madam Chair, to um, allow the board members to continue their discussion. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, could the applicant uh, speak to the hardship? Yes, and, and, and I will- it, it, I would I'm suggest... sorry, I was on mute. Sorry about that. I'm talking to myself. Um, Mr. May, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, that was going to be my question for Mr. Clancy. I see that, you know, the change that you've made here, but you haven't addressed the hardship. And, and, and I, can, I can say this, at the, at the zoning board level, we never really got into a hardship argument. It, the, the discussion was three, they, they, it was three is too many. We, and what they did was they suggested that they deny this and that we come back to them with a two. And, and so we never really got into a hardship. I, I understand that the, the, the decision states that there's no hardship, um, but we never really made it to the hardship argument. It was, and, and I think it was Chief Galligan that had, had suggested that three is too many. Um, Chief Michael Williams agreed, and so did Mr. Bernard, and they all suggested that we come back with two and at that point, we sort of, you know, we didn't really present much more of an argument with than that because we understood what their position was at that time, respected that position. In fact, I, I sort of felt that way right from the beginning. Um, and, and we just left it at that. We never really got into the hardship argument. And I, I guess our hardship argument would have been something to the effect that this is an area that is predominantly um, predominantly residential dwelling. Um, and, and, and like I said, the, the, the board members um, suggested to us that if we come back with a two, then that would be something that they would approve. Um, and, and, you know, we really didn't get into the hardship argument. Well, looking at it from the area of view, it, it, it's a it is commercial, um, confirming what Mr. May presented, commercial to the west, south. Um, 
Mr. Sweeney, do you recall hearing this at the ZBA? Um, I, I have notes on it, but I, I don't remember it in action. Okay. Other questions from the board? I guess I just, you know, I, I just don't understand how you get around the hardship issue. You know, I understand it's predominantly, you know, residential dwellings in that area, but nevertheless, we're dealing with a commercial zone. So, you know, what, you know, what can you say, you know? Well, to well and, and I would suggest that as, as I pointed out, it's, it's predominantly residential. The lots are not in, in that area. The lots aren't sufficient for for parking um, for a commercial type of a of a um, property. Um, it it you know you're you're pulling out onto a main road at a at a busy intersection amongst all of these residential homes that have been sort of built up around in this in this commercial area. I would suggest that it's just no longer conducive for a commercial type property, especially with the parking. The parking would be a huge problem down there for a commercial property. Although I should say the lack thereof. Yeah, uh, any other questions from the board? Chief Williams? So just, this is the property that we're talking about here. And not where those trucks are parked? Not where the trucks are parked. The part, it's, it's north of this, it's right here. Madam Chair, I have no comment at this time. We'll see what the zoning board does with it if it gets back to them. Okay. Madam Chair, I like to see the previous uh, application with three billing. Uh, with two units on it. Uh, Let's see if Mr. May can accommodate that. Let me see if I can find that. Hang on, I gotta open another one. Can everybody see that? Yes, yeah. So you had two lots that faced um, East Ashland and one lot that faced North Montello. So I have a comment on that. So after seeing the previous application and the recent application, I don't see any significant difference in uh, in those two so yeah i mean and look at, from looking at the area view um because at first mr clancy i thought well you know you're right it looks like it's would be difficult for a commercial business to be built there for the parking but and entrances and exits exits but now looking at the previous application where that other houses on the side street, that would be an exit and an entrance. So it is feasible. But at first, looking from this view, I thought, hmm, there could be a hardship, but not not when I looked at the previous application now. But we had to have six, to, in order to put the three houses up, we needed six curb cuts just to, to access the property. Um, I think there is one there um, yeah. that we would use for two, multi-family dwellings, as opposed to the six curb cuts. Um, but the, as you can see, it's, it's the, that, those commercial lots are, are quite a bit smaller than the lots mm -hmm. that you see. The other lots have plenty of parking and, and are more conducive for, for commercial. 
Um, you know, you, you, you put a storefront up there and they're gonna be parking out on the street, on the front of Montello Street. Um, there's just not a lot of, there's, there's not a lot of parking for a commercial property. Well, and, and Madam Chair, I just want to point out commercial does not necessarily mean that it is residential or uh, retail. It could be an office. It could be um, an expansion of, of one of the adjacent businesses. It could be a couple of different things. So just wanted to put that out there. All right, thank you. Um, any other questions from the board? Yeah, uh, if I could, Madam Chair, it just seems uh, to me when you, uh, with the considering the commercial on that corner, um, you're going to have a lot, you, you may have some uptick in traffic with your residential, but a commercial property could customize that corner a little better. Uh, whereas residential, you definitely need an in and an out uh, as you dice the lot up. So as you get to that intersection, it actually gets tighter with traffic. Whereas a commercial property, uh, they, could, they could have one on one side, one on the other, and it could be farther away from the intersection. Uh, traffic does become an issue. Good point. Uh, okay. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that property has been like it, it is dilapidated. It is it, it hasn't there's been nothing commercially. There's been nothing done with that property for years. I think it was like an old sausage factory. Um, and it's and as if you've seen it, um, nobody has picked this piece of commercial property up. That's why it's sitting there and it looks this way. Mm -hmm. that, and, and I think that was another concern for the neighbors is that <laughs> they're, they're tired of, of, of looking at this dilapidated, these dilapidated buildings um, that just really, you know, were of little value in, in, in a commercial zone. Uh, Madam Chair, if the board um, has, is done taking uh, its comments or, or would take a break, um, I do have um, some people who would like to address the board or would like to see if there's people who want to address the board. We're ready. Okay, I know Councilor Dubois had her hand up. Is there anybody else who would like to speak to the um, board regarding this case? Please use the uh, raise your hand feature at the bottom of the uh, application, at the bottom of your screen. I do not see anybody else with their hand up, so I believe it is um, Representative Dubois. Thank you all. I'm so happy to join you here tonight. Um, I'm actually here for a different item later on the agenda, but as luck would have it, I know this site very well. Um, I grew up in this area and um, from I'm 48 and my whole life, it's been a dilapidated um, corner, um, pretty bad. Right across the street, uh, I wanna say, I don't know, I was a city councilor at the time. We approved a lot that was dilapidated through the ZBA that was less than 5,000 square feet. I, there really wasn't a, a variance. There wasn't really hardship there either, but it was either just stay a disgusting lot where drug deals and issues were happening or have a home there. And actually, um, I didn't really support that at the time, but now I look at it and I'm like, I'm glad they they decided the way they did because the house is really good there. So this intersection, um, there is residential uh, across uh, East Ashland. There is residential across um, North Montello, Caddy Corner. Um, there used to be a flower shop there when my mom was a kid. My mom grew up on the corner of Elliott and East Ashland, um, Mulberry Street in East Ashland, which is just a block away. And that same family, Jack, Jack um, Reardon has his law office there, but he has his law office there because, you know, it was his mom's mom's flower shop. So um, the commercial, so to speak, like tip top, that closed. Um, and it's really an island. Um, so I just, 
I just support um, this going back to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we just had the issue on Armiston where there were the same number of units and we sent it back. Um, this is a totally, you know, two buildings instead of three, three less residential homes. We really need housing. Housing is so important. And in this area, I really can't see the residents being mad about it. And so whenever I see a, no, no disrespect to any board member, because I understand your, what, what you said, and I, I respect every one of you, and I thank you for your time. But I just really, we so need housing. And um, it just seems like it would be a beneficial move for the city to approve multifamily units in an area where people won't be mad about it. And this seems like a perfect area. And like I said, I'm 48, and that land has just laid fallow for decades. And so I, I would, um, you know, I just support it going back, but whatever you decide, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, no, one, no other public comments, Rob? Not that I can see, Councilor. Uh, <laughs> Madam Chair, I'm okay. sorry. Um, board members, is there a motion? Madam Chair, um, I'd like to make a motion uh, to deny um, the return to the ZBA. Unfortunately, I just can't get around the hardship issue. Second. Roll call vote, Larry Hassan. Yes, to deny. James Sweeney. Yes, denial. Samantha Broyce. Move to deny. Burita Das. You're on mute. You're on mute. Sorry. Yes to deny. Tony Gonzalez, yes to pass. Uh, he would have needed four to four in the affirmative. So that the denial stands. Yes. Sorry, sorry about that. It kind of saw um, the hardship could go both ways. I agree with that corner when I drive by, but that is the verdict from the board members. Thank you for your time. Right. Thank you. Okay. Moving on, we're at Scott's here. Scott's here. Okay. Scott's here. Well, okay. Do we have do we go on to battles or do we go backwards? We Roll backwards to 8894 Kingman Street. If Scott is ready, if not, we'll continue well, on. He should be being promoted to panelist. Ready, folks. Here I am. All right, you're up, Scott. Thank you very much for your patience, folks. I unfortunately had to drive my daughter into Boston and fight with traffic and get home in time for this. So uh, I appreciate you folks uh, accommodating Attorney Creed and I, but I'll, I'll let Jake start running with the ball and I'll jump in when I need to. Madam Chair, thank you very much again. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Madam Chair, Attorney Jake Creed in 71 Legion Parkway, Brockton. Uh, just briefly, um, to give you a comfort zone, um, Jim Meeks, who's the uh, petitioner here, um, has already done several completely similar uh, single family house situations in residential areas. This is a residential area. It contained and received its variance as a subdivision because one of the reasons it's a what's so-called a through street. A through street is one that uh, abuts frontage on both uh, public ways. In this case, it's Kingman Street and Draper Street. Jim himself actually lives across the street on Draper Street from this with his wife and family. Um, Scott has been, I believe, to, uh, to the uh, site review board and uh, I believe he's complied with all of the uh, requests they've made because we just recently in the last couple of years, right in that area, put two exactly similar situations that Mr. Meeks uh, was the developer 
So I'd turn it back to you, Scott, just to give them the uh, the history of, sure. uh, of what was done. Thanks, Jake. Uh, Madam Chair, board members, uh, as Jake said, uh, the petition is for a definitive subdivision uh, to allow for the division of the property as shown. It is, uh, again, as Attorney Creedon said, two through lots that front on both Kingman and Draper Street. They Each of the lots have an existing house on Kingman Street that will remain. We're looking to construct a new house on lots three and four. Uh, you folks saw the preliminary back in August. We went to the ZBA back in September. Uh, and received approval for the plan as shown. Uh, the lots, the houses themselves meet the setback requirements. The lots are the exact size of all the uh, remaining lots in, in the area. They're all 6,909 square feet uh, all around us, except for the immediate lot to the, uh, to the right of us, to the north of us. But all the other lots across the street and abutting us are all of the exact same size. Uh, in these situations, the, the new process with, with you folks is to submit a preliminary plan, kind of get permission to go to the ZBA. If we get ZBA approval, then we come back to you folks for a definitive subdivision to, to grant the actual lot division. And usually the, the most important thing that we, that we look for is the milling of the street actually. And we, we have that note in the plan where we're milling the street from gutter to gutter uh, from one utility trench to the other. So there won't be a series of, of trenches and potential potholes uh, within Draper Street. So uh, really that's it, I think, Madam Chair. If there's any other questions, we'd be happy to answer them. And it is a residential area, Madam Chair, that whole area. Thank you, board members. Questions? Do we have a rendering to, uh, to put in front of us? A, a plan that I could put in front of you, uh, Mr. You. Sweeney, if Rob wants to let me share the screen. Yeah, that, that'll be helpful because I don't see. Scott, you should be able to share. That's right. I should be able to, Rob. Thank you for that. Uh, but, but it's not opening? It's you know I'm, I'm sure it's okay, opening. It's it's my uh, my technological uh, shortcomings are the issue here. Shouldn't have taken your daughter to Boston this morning. Really needed her here with me. You're right. All right, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Definitive subdivision. Here it comes, Mr. Swing. Oh, no, that's not the application. Here we go. There's the plan, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, so again, two existing houses on Kingman. Right, right now we're looking at your... Double click. <laughs> Sorry. Put this way, click it. <laughs> My screen sharing is telling me. We're just looking at where you saved it. Screen. Not on us. Any hint? Uh, let me see if I got uh, it. Um, Scott, I have it. I'm going to open, I'm going to kick you out of sharing. Oh, well, we and... said you're a lifesaver, Rob. <laughs> There you go. Yes. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So there it is. So Mr. Sweeney, again, the, the two houses on Kingman Street, then the, the two lots on the plan that look like they're behind them on Draper, lots three and four, all those lots across the street on Draper or ahead on Kingman uh, to the left heading out towards uh, back towards Crescent Street. They're all 6,909 square foot lots. Uh, the houses are your kind of regular uh, old-fashioned colonial type house that fits in with a neighborhood on 
on Draper, uh, single family homes on each lot, drainage to handle the roof infiltration and uh, available water and sewer within Draper Street. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Ferry. And, and the significant changes are? This one's actually already been approved by ZBA, so it's, it's yeah. actually a definitive subdivision. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Mr. May, do you have anything you want to add to this? Um, I believe we have some comments. Hang on, let me switch really fast to my cheat sheet. Um, I know we had talked about sidewalks. Um, so the Kingman Street is to be milled and overlaid. Um, from corner to corner, curb to curb, uh, between the uh, trenches, the sidewalk damage during utility installation requires replacement, not patches. And that the waiver from site, oh, we haven't got to the waivers yet, but the waivers should be declined um, and they should build the sidewalk out. Um, Madam Chair, we're requesting that it's not trench to trench, it's limits of the of the um, subdivision. So it's a little further out for the page. Thank you, sorry, misread that. Thank you. Uh, you wanna repeat that again, Pam? <clears throat> so the, the pavement as it shows on the plan is showing um, what they call trench to trench for where he's going into the ground to where he's going into the ground for utilities. DPW would prefer that we go um, lot line to lot line to limits of the subdivision, and that allows him to put the bounds in for the limits of the subdivision. Okay, that's a good thing. Okay, yeah, that's fine with us, Madam Chair. All right, thank you for that. Um, if there's no other questions from board. Is anyone have their hand up from the public? If anybody from the public wishes to uh, address the board, please use the raise your hand uh, symbol at the bottom of your page. I don't see anybody with the raise your hand up, so I'll turn it back to you. All right. Uh, is there a motion from a board member? Motion to approve with standard conditions. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call vote, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Approved with standard conditions and the following special conditions. Do you need me to read those off, Pam, or do you have them in from the notes? No, I have them. Okay, thank you. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank um, you, Madam Chair. I assume he's going to put them under covenant? Yes. I, I, I would assume so, Pam. Yes. And we have to vote on the waiver. Okay. Um, is there a motion on the waiver? The, way, the request for a waiver was to um, not put in the required sidewalk. Motion to deny. And change to DPW's recommendations. Yes, ma'am. They have to install sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Lot line to lot line. Okay. Second. 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 Roll call. Larry Hassan. Motion to deny. Okay. So. We want to deny as the waiver was requested at the special. That is correct. Okay. So we'll make, uh, we'll add the standard conditions with the following. Right. But you already, they already voted that. You're just voting on the denial of the waiver. Denying the waiver. Okay. So this, this connecting sidewalks will be included in the approval. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, do we get a second to deny? Second. 
Okay, roll call, Larry Son. Motion to deny. James Sweeney. Deny. Samantha Rose. Move deny. Rita Das. Yes to deny. Mike Gonzalez, move to deny. All right, thank you. Thank you, folks. Okay. Um, Attorney Creighton. Yes. When we do the approval letter, I'll need both the current property owners and Mr. Meeks to sign. Not a problem. Same with the covenant. Yep. Next on the agenda, permission to return Thank to ZBA, 14 Battle Street. Attorney John Creedon. Yeah, good evening again, Madam Chair, and through you, the members of the board, uh, Attorney Jake Creedon, 71 Legion Parkway, Brockton. Uh, this particular petition has a pretty significant uh, his, uh, issue and uh, history over the last five years. The lot in question had a house on it. It was burnt down. It was owned by, uh, who's with me here this evening in my office, uh, Valentino Gomes. And uh, both times the petition that we put in had a basement living quarter in it. The first time the denial came through from the zoning board, it was, and I'll read just the, the quick language, and that was back in November of 19. The petitioner failed to provide sufficient documentations to the board to make an informed decision. Um, the addition of a fifth bedroom in addition to fire safety concerns with the living and sleeping accommodations proposed within the below grade basement. In other words, Mr. <clears throat> um, Valentino asked that they put uh, two, we put two bedrooms down below grade. Uh, that was denied. We then came back after being returned from the um, planning board um, with a proposed plan that had an approved state, and I might add interstate, um, uh, ingress and egress from a, uh, uh, from a living situation, albeit uh, below grade. As you know, I believe the, the uh, and Deputy Williams, of course, is here listening, uh, has two chiefs of the fire department, one farmer and one present. And both of them were very vocal in both the decisions that they made that the reason for the denial, you know, we're, go we're, we're gonna let you have a house there, but you can't have living quarters below basement. So the new plans, which I think you can see, um, clearly eliminates any living quarters, be, uh, bedrooms or anything. So there's no need for uh, the, the egress, ingress uh, situation. Their exact language in, uh, in the other decision indicated it would be very difficult uh, for elderly occupants climbing up and out a smoke-filled window from below grade. So in both of those denials, that was the major reason for it. Uh, we've put in the new plans that just has the three bedrooms, uh, which Scott will address uh, with you. And uh, we also did one other major change and that is to widen the driveway. And Scott, will, if you would indicate that also. So I believe uh, he'll suggest as I am suggesting that we have made a substantial change by eliminating any living quarters below grade. It will now in a residential zone be a single family home. And I might add that in either, in either petition, there was no neighborhood opposition, they're in favor of it. And the city councilor from the Shirley Azak testified both at the zoning board and the planning board saying she was in favor of it. So uh, that's my part of the situation. Scott, would you give them the dimensions on the other things? Yep, thank you, Attorney Curtin. Uh, Madam Chair, board members, uh, as Attorney Creighton said, the uh, the plot plan itself, what, what we're looking to do is pretty much rebuild the exact same footprint that was there uh, previously that that burned down. It, it's the exact same uh, size. It's a three bedroom single family home. Uh, it gets access through Battle Street uh, through a right of way uh, from the property in front. Uh, as Attorney Creighton said, the the one thing it, it wasn't really an issue with the ZBA, but one thing that we uh, try to do with this plan is to create a little bit uh, better parking situation. So we do have two dedicated parking spaces on our property uh, for our home. 
and then there's uh, ample room to turn around uh, within the right of way and to get back out to Battle Street. Uh, there is uh, existing utilities, both sewer and water are available on Battle Street. Uh, as Jake said, the, the biggest issue, it seems at the ZBA was that basement uh, living area and also the access and uh, ingress and egress from the building. Uh, the building plans clearly show uh, two means of, of access uh, into and out of the building uh, through your, you know, your typical entry doors. Uh, so I think we've addressed all of the the issues that the ZBA and I just uh, looking for permission to get back before them and, and get this petition in front of them. I, I might add, uh, Madam Chair, that Mr. Gomes, who's here, Valentino's here, uh, he owns both properties. He lives in presently the first piece of property, the new home, if allowed, uh, he will be living there with his wife and, and family. And his brother lives with him in the, in the two family that's uh, in the beginning of the property. So it's still a family thing and they've owned it for many, many years. Thank you. I'm doing it again. Tried to mute myself so you wouldn't hear me trying to pull up this on the area view, but if this is returned to ZBA. Just, um, I didn't hear what the substantial changes really can. Scott, I think that the, the biggest thing, Madam Chair, is the uh, the basement living quarters. Uh, that was one of the issues that the the board, the ZBA, brought up on a couple of different occasions. Uh, was the the basement living quarters? So uh, we've entirely, completely eliminated that from this plan. So there's no area labeled unfinished basement that still has enough area to stand in and to enter and exit from. Is the base, can you still enter and exit into the basement and it has standing room or is it a crawl space now? No, it's it's a, a conventional basement just with no living space, just right. a conventional basement with a with a bulkhead uh, exit. Then there'll be utilities, your furnace and uh, water heater, things like that in the basement. So it's, it's just your typical basement where the previous plan actually showed bedrooms and, and living space uh, down in the basement. Questions from the board? Madam Chair, Larry, yes. uh, just a comment. I mean, based on what I'm hearing, I mean, it's they're looking to build a single family home that has a basement. They're not looking to have bedrooms anymore. So right. I don't see any issue with what we're discussing right now for them to be able to return to ZBA. That's my opinion. Thank you, Larry. Other board members? Yeah, really quickly, please. So, um, and you might have mentioned this. So the first home uh, that your client lives in, is that, that's a three family. Is that right, Attorney Creedon? No, that was a, you know, the original burned down house. That was a single family house. No. That was a single family house. Okay. And then, the, and then the other home that's next to that original. That's a three family. Okay. That's a three family. Oh, yes. and so there's, is there's the screen is jumping around here. So is there sufficient parking? So, um, the, the three family can park six cars, is that right? Yes. Okay, and then in terms of the uh, single family home, how many parking spaces did you say that had? Two. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing two realistically, they could, they could certainly fit four cars within their driveways, you know, back to back, but we're showing two cars, but there would be enough for four if they needed to. Okay, thank you. No other questions from the board. I'll open up to public comment. Um, we haven't seen the uh, site plan. Let me pull that up just a second um, because that was a topic of discussion. Um, so here at the front lot um, is a triple decker and there's two parking spaces here and assuming that the other four cars are going to park in the driveway, is that what we're again? Because realistically, here's the new single family home with yep. two cars here, right? I think for the, the front three family home where we have those two cars uh, parallel to Battle Street that you were, but you're right, we could you could put two cars behind those two cars and they would still provide. 
uh, access through that right of way. So you would have the two cars there. So that would give four for the front and then two cars could park alongside the, the driveway and still have room for the back property to get through with the, okay. it, it, it's a, a widened, you know, we're widening the driveway right now. So there would be room to, to get by cars parked on the side of the driveway. Okay. And what I'm getting at is that with the density of this neighborhood and I'm, I love density for the most part, um, but you have a three family and you're now proposing to do a three bedroom single family behind it where there was a, a property that burned down. And then Mr. Gomes also owns the property to the west, which is a vacant lot and city that he bought as uh, at a butter program um, that the city council has removed the building restrictions on. So do you anticipate that lot being built on? So now we're going to have, you know, maybe there's another triple decker here. Uh, Mr. Gomes is here. Um, pardon me. At uh, best, he's thinking about a two family. Right now, it's a cornfield, a huge cornfield. And uh, in the future, uh, he was thinking of putting a two family or a duplex in there. But that's a huge lot. Um, right. And Battled Street is a no parking street. You can't park out there. And the way it looks now, this triple decker is using the area where the burnt down home was for parking. Mm -hmm. so, Mr. Gomes says they're not using that space presently. He lives in the house, in the other house. Um, I can't. I can't tell if that driveway is wide enough to accommodate all of these families. And the concern still remains, although you labeled the basement now to be unfinished, um, you know, it's not for us to police this in the future. If should it be finished for living space or rentable units? Yeah. I, I'm quite certain, um, certain that the zoning board will restrict and condition that there's to be no living space there, if that's, if that's a concern. Okay, all right, thank you. There are no other questions from the board. Is there a motion? Oh, there's, oh hey, uh, oh, we, still have we the got public. members of the public. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, sorry, Dr. So Men. you, if you haven't been moved into the panelist section, uh, members of the public, um, please use the raise your hand function. I know um, we have Councillor Mendez here, um, and I believe Councillor Asak Council is Asak. also there. She needs she needs to turn on her light and be brighter. So I hardly see her in the dark there. It's like she's hiding from somebody. There you are waving. Um, so I'm gonna. Uh, I would suggest Councillor Asak first, since she is the ward councillor, and then uh, Councillor Mendez because she is the at-large council. Good evening. Uh, thank you, uh, Rob. Good evening, Madam Chair and um, Planning Board members. Shirley Azak, Ward Seven City Councillor. I apologize for the light, but I you have a very long agenda, car. and I'm in my car. <laughs> um, can you see me? Okay, Rob, are you there? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. I can see you. Um, so I, this evening, I'm speaking in favor of this, um, this applicant. Um, as you heard at the beginning, this has been going on for a number of years. I believe Attorney Creedon said about five years, and I have attended all the meetings with uh, Attorney Creedon and the applicant, Mr. Valentino Gomes. So um, from the last time they were before ZBA, the, the big concern was the bedrooms in the basement. And from what I'm hearing this evening, what I've been to, uh, what Mr. Gomes uh, informed me before this uh, meeting is that there will no longer be bedrooms in the basement. So, um, I mean, that, that was the biggest concern with zoning. So I hope uh, that this evening that you um, approve that his application to go back before zoning as, um, you know, this, uh, this is a long history behind this um, this home that burnt down, and um, and I know that it would be nice to have something there. And Mr. Um, Mr. Gomes is a 
Mr. Gomes is really, he does, you know, he keeps his properties well maintained. And um, just Madam Chair, I know you mentioned about parking, but his drive, he has a very um, long driveway and his cars are always parked in the driveway. He's not on Battle Street at all. So um, I just, I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you and I hope that you vote in favor of this petition this evening. Thank you. Drive carefully. Um, Councilor Mendez, would you like to address the board? Yes, uh, thank you so much for having me here tonight. And I also wanted to speak in favor of this petition to go back to the um, ZBA. I also spoke with uh, Mr. Valentino and also with the attorney Creedon. And I'm very confident that since there's not gonna be a living space in that basement and there was a single family residence there before now he's essentially just looking to rebuild another single family in that same lot then I do think this is something great uh, for the city and for Mr. Valentino. And I ask the board to please um, consider in uh, moving this favorably back to the ZBA so that he can go on with his life and with the project and, and see that uh, moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other members of the public? And I do not see any. Okay, from board members, is there a motion? Motion to approve permission to return to ZBA. Is there a second? I'll second that. Roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. Marita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez moved to approve. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. All right. Uh, next on the agenda, parcel 11928-11929 Industrial Boulevard, Industrial Building. Applicant Brockton Industrial Property Owner LLC, Eugene Sullivan. Representative. Um, would the folks representing this project please raise your hand? I'm trying to find um, Sullivan. I'm I here. Him. Yeah. I'm oh, here. you've already moved him. I'm sorry. Um, uh, anybody else on your team? Uh, Haley Marsh might be there from the ownership group. Yeah, yes, she did. Okay. Pelaposa. I'm sorry. Trying to confuse me. <laughs> there she goes. Sorry, Haley. All right. All right, you're up, Gene. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Gene Sullivan. I'm an engineer representing uh, Brockton Power LLC. Uh, we're looking to develop a 13.8. Uh, 13.18 acre parcel in the industrial I-3 zoning district um, off of Oak Hill Way uh, on Industrial Boulevard. Uh, today it's a vacant lot and uh, probably the easiest way to walk you through the project is if I could share my screen with you and uh, go through some of the drawings. Hopefully you can, yes. Oh. <laughs> Don't feel bad, there's a major, major computer, computer outage east of the Mississippi. Uh, it's gonna do one of these, is it? So it's what uh, you guys I are share contact, content, right? And it's not taking me to what I wanna see. I have a copy of the plans that I can put up. Okay. If you could possibly navigate to C.2, which is probably the third or fourth sheet, I can pretty well explain everything off of that page. Go down to one more. 
to you too. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, just to orientate you uh, to the plan, and I'm going to use top left, right, and bottom as my directional um, keys. Uh, the industrial boulevard, you can see, is grayed out on the top of the uh, plan. Um, and we're proposing uh, two access drives off of that. But uh, important features to note about the site now on the far left hand side is the uh, Salisbury Plain River. And uh, we have a couple of different wetland areas, one in that bottom left hand corner uh, adjacent to the river and a second one kind of in the middle there as well. Um, they're both uh, uh, actually good wetlands, uh, thriving wetlands. We have maintained the 25 foot uh, and 50 foot notice or 25 foot no disturb and 50 foot no build zones there. Um, you'll also see a, a heavy blue line going along the river and then kind of through the wetlands. Uh, that is the FEMA floodplain, FEMA floodplain elevation uh, for the site. Uh, you'll notice we haven't done any work within the floodplain except for uh, addressing some old uh, issues that I'll get into in a few minutes. Um, so our, our building here is a 150,000 square foot uh, approximate warehouse. Um, it's a distribution type warehouse and light manufacturing. Potentially, we do not have a tenant at this time, um, but the proposed uses are consistent with what's allowed uh, by the bylaw. Um, we have shown uh, loading docks on the bottom of the building, say, uh, in the middle, and also on the left-hand side. Um, at this time, we set it up as if it could be a multi-tenant building. You can see two different uh, office areas identified in the, yes, those uh, pinkish spaces. Um, again, they're a little theoretical at this time, uh, although we have had some pretty good activity recently, tenant-wise. Um, we've provided full circulation around the building coming off Industrial Boulevard. There's two driveways, um, uh, good fire uh, department access, uh, which we've already reviewed with the fire department previously. Uh, we have a parking field in front of or between Industrial Boulevard and the office spaces for uh, office personnel. We typically find that uh, we need about 5% of the, the spaces to be set aside for office for uh, managing warehouse or light manufacturing operations. Um, there's a total of 95 spaces delineated throughout the site. There's also some adjacent to the river um, off to the left hand side. Uh, other features of note, you'll see uh, three different infiltration basins that are uh, kind of in green uh, in the plan, starting where Rob's got the pointer. We have one over by the river, uh, one at the bottom near the wetlands, and then in the grass area at the front near Industrial Boulevard. Um, they all will receive different types of runoffs. The two bottom ones will be getting runoff collected off of the roof, as well as parking lot runoff from the loading areas. Uh, and then the one up top will be getting uh, runoff that's generated by the front parking area. Uh, all of these areas are routed through deep sump catch basins and water quality units uh, prior to discharge into our basins. Um, we have gone to conservation because we are within the 100 foot buffer zone and did receive an order of conditions uh, back in early October for our project. Um, during that process, we worked with the, the beta group as the uh, peer review, uh, stormwater peer reviewer, um, and we gained approval of our stormwater systems through them in terms of water quality rate and uh, conformance with the uh, mass DEP guidelines. Um, other things of note, we will be bringing in new water, uh, sewer and electrical services to the property as it is undeveloped. Um, those red boxes on the right-hand side of the building are basically the home for our uh, electrical services, fire alarm uh, services, as well as sprinkler rooms and things like that. We have looped a water line around the building to provide uh, fire hydrants throughout and also um, feed our sprinkler systems for the property. Um, that's an overview of what we're doing. Additionally, we provided lighting, uh, site lighting plans and photometrics, as well as landscaping plans and a um, Tip uh, building elevation of the front so you have a flavor for what type of structure we're building here. Um, this building is proposed to have uh, a clear height of 40 feet at the low point. So it's a high bay warehouse. 
Um, this is just a generic plan showing where the docks, docks are and so forth until we get further development with a tenant. Um, and with that, I'm open to answer any questions from the, from the board and the public. Thank you for that. Uh, board you members, know. questions? No questions? Okay. Mr. May, public comment? Uh, public comment. I do know that we have um, Representative Dubois, and we also have um, uh, Ward Counselor. Um, that I am, I'm sorry, Susan, I can't show that I'm going to promote to panelists. I should have moved over. There they go, they're promoting over now. Um, is there anybody else from the public who would like to address this uh, case? And I don't see any other hands up at this time. Um, Councillor or representative, who would like to go first? Why don't you go ahead, Representative Dubois? Thank you so much, um, Councillor Nicastro, for letting me speak first. Um, Madam, Madam Chairwoman and the board, I am here this evening. Um, this is the this is the agenda item. I I came. Um, I am in wholehearted support of this. Um, this is would be a wonderful thing for the area. You may know that this is the site of a proposed 350 megawatt um, gas fired power plant um, that has been, uh, and I, I'm really grateful of if this is the plan that um, is going to take its spot, um, that has been a subject of so much controversy. It's what got me into uh, city council. It's got me into state rep. I have very bad asthma, as do many people in our in our city, and I am um, just grateful to hear from the owner of the lot um, that he has decided to change his plan on the power plant. And I would love to hear more about that. And I just want to express my gratitude. And um, it will it would be a wonderful um, welcome addition to our community. Um, and I just can't express enough how critical it would be to approve this if this um, means that uh, we won't have a 350 megawatt natural gas power plant uh, polluting our, 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 our residents and um, really um, power plants aren't needed anymore. And I'm, uh, I just can't, I, I can't express how happy I was because I do read it, the agendas um, religiously for every single city meeting cell, even though I'm at the state house. When I saw this, I, I started to cry. So I really hope that this um, goes through, it gets approved. And I'm, I'm, I would love to hear from the proponent, um, their plans on, um, you know, is this the new, is this the new plan for the site? And um, I mean, I, I would just be so grateful to know more about that. So I, I just can't speak enough um, in support of this. And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. My turn? Yes. Thank you. Good evening. <coughs> thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Um, I've monitored this proposed project since Haley Pelizola first reached out to me um, more than a year ago. And um, I, I do support this use. This is appropriate in this neighborhood. It has come to be known as an industrial park. So this is right up its alley, if you will. I. I have one concern, and it's an important concern because um, I noticed that your your application is not complete because a copy of the purchase and sales agreement for this property was not attached to it. Um, if you look at the application, your applicant is the purchaser, but the property is now owned by someone else as reflected in the records of the, the Brockton City Assessor. Um, it's kind of important. It provides the public with proof. And it also gives you guys, the planning board assurance that any applicant seeking approval who is not the owner has the legal standing to pursue the permitting on someone else's land. And um, in addition to that, 
I, I just think it it uh, it is good form to have a copy of the PNS attached. Um, I know that Mr. May was able to get a partial copy, three pages, no signatures. And so um, if you are willing to, um, to approve this tonight, and it's been through tech review, it's kind of been stringently reviewed by the city and the city's representatives. I, I, would, I would like to see you consider making your vote conditional on receiving a complete copy of the purchase and sales agreement tomorrow. And on um, the planning director's review and confirmation that, that the PNS um, has the current owner's signature on it um, and reflecting an intention to sell. Um, I've been very involved on this piece of property for more than 10 years. You don't wanna hear how involved I've been, but I've got a lot of residents of Ward 4 and the surrounding towns who are watching this very closely. And so I owe it to them, and I think we all owe it to them to make sure that everything is buttoned up and done correctly. And so that is my sincere request of you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you this evening. Thank, Thank you. you, Councilor. Any other um, hands raised for- Any other? Any other people from the public? Any other ah, members of the public uh, who wish to speak, please raise your hand so I can um, unmute your microphone. And I am not seeing anybody raising their hands. I would um, want to confirm with the uh, chair that um, uh, I would uh, abide by um, Councillor Nicastro's request. So we would tentatively, and then once we have it in our hand, I will let her know and we're ready to go. And so just to repeat that. Scout's, Scout's honor. And, and that would be to, if we decided to pass this, make it contingent on receipt of the PNS purchase and sales. PNS. To confirm the owner's intention to sell. It, can you just repeat that again? Yes. For, Castro, what your concern is, the person selling is actually still the, is buying it? Is that, that's kind of what I heard, but I must be mistaken. Um, Madam Chair, oh, or ahead. I yeah. will speak. Thanks, Jean. Um, I'll go ahead and interject. Thank you, Rob and uh, Madam Chair. GFI Partners, its affiliate, uh, Brockton Industrial property owner is the applicant um, is under agreement for purchase of this land from the current owner. They had signed off giving us authorization as agent. We're currently under agreement and we have a signed purchase and sale agreement. I apologize that I, I didn't, this, this was an oversight on my part. Um, you know, not customary to other uh, site plan applications. I've never had to submit a purchase and sale agreement. Um, I am happy to provide that. Uh, GFI, its affiliate Brockton Industrial um, Property Owner, is extremely excited about this project. And although we, we don't have a firm commitment from a from a tenant yet, we're very close. Um, it's it's definitely our intent to move forward with this warehouse project. Um, you know, we're a we're a local developer and uh, happy to provide the purchase and sale agreement with the redacted, um, obviously, financial information. Okay, with that said, further questions, comments? Do you there. still need that information, Tony? That's gonna I don't be know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Now we can. Okay, I, I don't know if this is a proper question or if it's allowable, but I'm wondering um, if Mr. Sullivan could maybe um, tell us if, if if is the sale of this property, does that mean that the power plant proposal is, is not moving forward? Oh, the sale of this, this property is to build a warehouse. Um, that's why we're getting approvals from them. As soon as we can get through governmental process, we're, we're already drawing and designing the, the building plans to build this warehouse that we presented tonight. Well, God bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs> So yes, Councilor Nicastro, if, if this is passed. The I ask that you make your vote conditional 
on the applicant's delivery of a complete copy of the final signed PNS agreement and any amendments thereto to the planning office tomorrow by email. Did you get that, Pam? All right. With that said, is there a motion from a board? Motion to, motion to approve with said purchase and sales delivered to the planning department. There a second. Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Samantha Boyce? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes, with the said conditions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have Thank a good you very all. much. Have a good evening. You too. And now our last item. We are here. Okay. Ah. Site plan approval. 161-0430 Clemens Ave, extension of utilities pavement. We have the applicant Claire and John with JK Holmgren representative. Thank you, Madam Chair. Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering. Uh, representing John and Claire Harrington, as you said, uh, a little bit different than uh, than your normal situation, Madam Chair and Board Members. What we're uh, proposing to do is to extend a roadway. Clemens Ave is currently a dead end street. Uh, my clients own property on the dead end street, but a portion of the street, uh, the portion that they own, is not constructed. So this is just a a site plan approval for us to continue the roadway within the Clemens Ave layout to provide my clients with access. They have the frontage and area. Right now they don't have access. Uh, we went to tech review, kind of kicked things around a little bit with the planning department, the engineering department and the fire department as well. Uh, and we came up with the, the plan that we have before you, which is a uh, pretty much a, a full roadway construction plan, even though uh, to be honest, the beginning of Clemens Ave is in is in pretty bad shape. Uh, we're going to build a pretty much a conventional subdivision for our section of the road with curbing and sidewalks. And the hope is that in the next few years, the uh, the DPW uh, repairs the the beginning of of uh, Clemens Ave and butts it up to our property, so uh, up to our roadway. So then there'll be a nice finished road. Uh, all the way from Thea Street, all the way uh, to the end of our roadway. Uh, as I said, we went to tech review. We've kicked it around a little bit, both with planning and with the engineering department. And uh, we have a little drainage area proposed uh, that'll handle the increased runoff. Right now, uh, Clemens Ave doesn't have any drainage. So we're uh, proposing uh, a bioretention area that will handle the runoff from our section of roadway. Uh, and all the other utilities, water, sewer, uh, electric will be extended uh, from where they dead end currently on Clemens Ave, Madam Chair. And the, uh, the end result is, again, it gives us access to build a single family home uh, on our existing plot number 43. Okay, thank you, Scott. Board members, is there any questions? Okay, hearing none. Mr. May, public comment. Oops. Public comment. Is there anybody here from the public who would like to comment on this? Please raise your hand. And I don't see anybody going up. Um, going once, going twice. Um, I would say there are no public comments All right. on this we'll item. Is there a motion from a board member? Motion to approve site plan approval. I do have a question though, Tony. There's a, a recommendation in here. You know, it says grant site plan approval with standard conditions and the following special conditions. Is that, I have to assume, Scott, you're okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank so you. Motion to approve. Second. And if you're going to approve that, just, you know, add in, you know, as the standard conditions read. Want me to read the whole paragraph? Nope, just as, just add in well, there. The DPW requirement that the horizontal datum reference be added on the drawing right. and that the proposed sanitary manhole shall be a drop inlet manhole with a out inlet elevation of 104, one, 
Wow, that's it's not 1,104. Right. And 83 feet. It should be 143. I think it's, one, it's 143. Right. Otherwise, it's, it's way up there. <laughs> that won't work. It happens when you cut no, and paste. No. Okay, we'll get that right then. Thank you. Um, but it is with standard conditions and those right. conditions. Right. Okay, roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Well, who seconded that? That was me. James. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Samantha Broyce? Yes. Marita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez with the said recommendations and standard conditions, et cetera. Thank you. All right. Thank you, folks. And uh, thanks for your patience early tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. Any other business, Mr. Ray or Pam? A motion to I adjourn? am looking forward to someone say a move to adjourn. But motion to I adjourn. Say that. Second. Thank you. All in favor? No, everyone. Yes. 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 Thank yes. you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.